This is the first Tumblr that I actually used the um, app Procreate on my iPad to draw the lines and color in the sections to create a quilted type pattern. Um, I am making this cup for a lady who quilts all the time for everybody and so I thought it would be cool to give her a cup that kind of resembles a quilt pattern. So here I am loading the template that I created in Procreate into my Cricut and then I forgot to delete that center line that was my guide to keep everything lined up and um, symmetrical. So I'm just using my eraser to delete that line before I upload this template into my Cricut machine to cut it and then apply it on, I cut it on double-sided tape and then apply it to my tumbler. I'm gonna cut this pattern both on double-sided tape and on a piece of printed floral vinyl because I'm gonna use pieces of the floral vinyl to fill in sections on that template and you'll see here in a minute. So I'm uploading, I'm gonna load it as a cut image. You can see I already have one, but I forgot to record. So I decided to do the whole process over so I could record so you see how I do it. And then I just unlocked the little lock to resize and I'm sizing it to the size of the tumbler that I'm using. I'm using a 20 ounce straight AF mother tumbler. And so I sized it so that when I wrap the template around, there'll be a little section on the top that's exposed for the stainless steel and then a little section on the bottom. And then I'm cutting this on washi tape. I don't wanna cut on vinyl because it'll cut straight through the double-sided, all the layers of the double-sided tape. And you can see that because I put my my blade on um, like extra deep, it still kinda cut through that double-sided tape, but that's okay. So I cut it on washi tape. And to begin, I'm making sure that I find the center line of my tumbler with that level ruler, lining it up and then eyeballing it just to make sure that I didn't get anything crooked. I'm always nervous about making my center line crooked. And then I'm gonna position my double-sided tape on that line just to make sure it wraps around and touches exactly where I want. And then I'm gonna start peeling off the backing paper and because I cut pretty deep on this um, double-sided tape, a couple little teeny, you can see the little teeny triangles got lifted up onto that paper as I peeled it, and this stuff is sticky. So if it comes off, um, I have not figured out a way to get it to stick back on. If it comes off, it just comes off, and then when you wanna put in the glitter or fill in those little gaps on those pieces that are missing, you're just gonna have to use some tacket or glitter glue or something like that. So I wipe the permanent marker line off before I continue because you don't want that black permanent marker line to show through. And then I'm gonna wrap the template all the way around until it meets up to the center line. This double-sided tape I got from scrapbook.com and I'll link it below in the description. I've heard of people using um, cat scratch paper. Um, I've never used that, but I've heard good things about it, so maybe I'll give that a try. It might be a little less expensive than the scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive. Okay, now that I've got this wrapped all the way around, I'm gonna pull up my iPad just to look at the colors, the color placement. And I started to follow it a little bit and then I just kind of went random and just started peeling up random pieces. So there are some colors that are touching that I wish I wouldn't have had touching, but that's okay. It still turned out really pretty and I'm happy with the ending result, but um, next time I'll make sure I break those super dark colors up a little bit more. And um, I know some people apply this template flat and then they wrap it when it's already glittered. That makes me really nervous because I'm afraid that when I start wrapping it after I've done all that work with the glitter applied laying flat, somehow I'm gonna mess up and get it wrinkled or it's not gonna line up. And then I'm gonna ruin the entire, all the time that I spent applying the glitter. And so that just makes me nervous. So, you know, it's it's personal preference. Maybe I'll try it sometime um, on a little, a small tumbler. So if I mess up, I'm not wasting so much material. 
So all the way around the tumbler, you just pick and choose where you wanna place those glitter colors. And when I put the glitter on there, I just rub it just a little bit, very, very gently I rub it to um, lock in those glitters onto that double-sided tape to make it stick really good and then brush it off and then move on. So this mica powder that I'm using, it's um, really dark and it's super messy. And so um, that's okay because those little pieces are gonna come off later anyway. So I made sure that I didn't apply, I didn't, um, swipe the mica powder and let it fall down over a color that I already applied. As long as it was just, you know, tumbling down over blank, uh, you know, the the uh, paper cover, that's, that's just fine. So it cleaned up nicely. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and watch this process. And this, um, these little glitters flew everywhere. They're super light and fluffy. Um, you're supposed to, you know, mix those into like an added or use them as an additive to mix into epoxy or a bright tone or whatever. And they just like scattered and flew all over my face, flew all over the project. And so I had quite a mess to clean up right after this one. So I'm going to swap out my sheets, clean up my area and then continue with my glitters. All right, now it's time to apply um, pieces of the template that I cut out of that floral vinyl. So I'm just eyeballing where I want the vinyl. Maybe I'll add a little glitter here and there, but um, I think for the most part, I want the rest of those sections to be vinyl. And it's okay for those areas to touch. Um, I think it looks kind of cool when two of the pieces of the vinyl's um, floral patterns touch. And so I'm just going all the way around and placing the pieces where I want them. And you're gonna see like a little, you're gonna see little slivers, unless I cut that portion out. Oh, yep, I already took it out. There was, when I cut this pattern onto my template, there was like a little um, outline around each piece. So you can see those little tiny lines laying on my paper. That's because I peeled up the outline on each piece. And if I had to do this template over again, I would have made sure those lines were much smaller or deleted completely so that it didn't cut an outline in between each of those sections. When I was glittering, I really want that little outline because it prevents my glitters from um, kind of uh, drifting into one another. But for the long run, it was kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> so I would probably avoid having a little outline around each section. So I just applied Tacket to the base of the tumbler and I'm gonna put some pink glitter over the Tacket, let that dry, and then I'm gonna spray the whole thing with a Krylon Clear um, Gloss. And then I'm also gonna put, um, I always like to do kind of a double protection, double protection just to make sure my glitters don't run. After the Krylon Clear Gloss, I'm going to put a um, very thin coating of um, quick coat over the top of it just to seal in those glitters really good before I apply my epoxy.
Okay, so my first coat of epoxy, I used a fast setting epoxy. So this cup was ready to take off the turner the very next morning. And I scraped off the epoxy that got on the insides and then also on the rim and just gave it a really good sand around the top of the rim. And then I would just felt around the cup to see if there were any bumps or lumps or anything that needed to be smoothed out or evened out before I started applying the vinyl. So I'm gonna sand any sections that I feel where there's a little pokey thing popping up. I want it to be perfectly smooth when I apply my vinyls because if it's not smooth then the vinyl is not going to adhere correctly and you're going to see it through the epoxy and it just doesn't look as um, finished or nice if you have those little bumps. So I'm going to go ahead and sand and then I'm going to spray with alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and give it a good wipe with paper towel. And I didn't worry about washing it with um, Dawn dish soap or um, anything uh, like that. I just gave it a good spray, made sure that there weren't any little sanded residues lingering around before I started applying my vinyl. Okay, all ready to apply those vinyl strips. Um, this sheet of vinyl, what I like to do when I'm making projects is I'll cut an entire 12 by 12 sheet of strips and um, then I just save those sheets and then I'll use them for various product projects if the colors match. So this vinyl, this um, dark rose um, color vinyl was a perfect match for this tumbler and I already had it in my craft bin ready to go. So instead of cutting a whole new sheet, I just um, use this one and this will, I'll still have more left over for more projects in the future. This part takes a long time and is very tedious. I'm going to apply each strip first diagonally and then I'm gonna start wrapping around horizontally and I didn't worry about cutting over the top of the vinyls. I just wrapped the horizontal vinyls just directly over the diagonal ones until the tumbler was completely finished with all the vinyl pieces. Now that all the vinyl strips are laid down where I want them, I 
put one more very thin layer of quick coat over the top of it, let it dry, and then it's time to apply your next layer of epoxy. So if you wanna apply a name or a saying or anything, you're gonna do this layer of epoxy, then you're gonna apply your vinyl or your water slide or whatever it is that you wanna put over the top of it, and then you're gonna to have to put another layer of epoxy. For my tumbler, I thought it was busy enough as is, and for the person I'm giving it to, I thought she would appreciate no writing or a saying on it. I think that she's gonna love it just the way it is. Um, and so I hope I hope she loves it just the way it is. Um, so if you enjoy this tutorial or if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. I will make sure I list all the supplies that I um, used. Um, I'll try my hardest not to forget anything. And um, yeah, there you go. So um, this was a pretty, a fairly simple project but very time consuming and very tedious. So um, make sure that you have something to watch on TV or some music to listen to so you're not um, you know, cramping up there, sitting lonely in your craft room. <laughs> it's a fun project to do, but it does take some time. And this is the final product. She's a pretty one. I like her a lot. Um, yeah, so there we go. So there's my, I don't know what to call it. I don't know if I should call it a quilted rose template tumbler or a glitter template procreate. I have no idea. I'm just gonna call it a rose glitter template tumbler, I guess. I'm not sure. Anyway, enjoy. Thank you so much for watching.